Hi, I'm Lesher Vikings of Bike Queens. And I'm Haley Schneider. Quick joke for you. Knock, knock. Who's there? A broken pencil. A broken pencil who? Never mind, it's pointless. Anyways, Happy New Year, Vikings. Welcome to 2023. People do a tradition during New Year's called New Year's resolutions. Some really common resolutions are going to the gym more, eating healthier. Wait, aren't those like really boring? Don't you have any more relatable resolutions? Uh, yeah, like wanting to keep your grades up or uh, being on time for class. Well, that's all, folks. No, <laughs> we see for more resolutions. Thanks, Haley and Artemis. I'm Macy, and welcome back to your daily dose of information. Did you know that 43% of people make New Year's resolutions, 35% lose motivation, 28% have no reason, 19% are too busy, and 18% shift goals and priorities throughout the year? Weird, right? Why would you make a resolution just to not do it anyway? I'm here to give you reasonable resolutions. First, focus on making goals and not resolutions. That way you are more likely to make them happen because you don't feel obligated to finish them in a certain amount of time. For example, instead of saying I'm going to get all my homework done by eight every night, you could say I want to clear out more time for my work and to study. That's all for today. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, and make reasonable goals. Hi Vikings and Vikings. Queens. I realize that we all tend to think January is a pretty boring month just because Christmas is over. First of all, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, observed in mid-January, is an important holiday that honors a civil rights leader. But second of all, we tend to get the most snow from December through February. So let's go ask some lesser students what their favorite thing to do when it snows is. Mine is going sledding. Hi, what is your name? Lyler. What, is, what grade are you in? Six. What is your favorite thing to do when it snows? Probably build a snowman with my little sister. Great. Hi, what is your name? My name is Micah. What grade are you in? Um, I'm in sixth grade. What is your favorite thing to do when it snows? I really enjoy like building snow forts, I guess. Great. Can I get in this? What grade are you in and what is your favorite thing to do when it snows? <laughs> It goes down the line. My name is Jace. Um, I like to build a big snowman. Uh, my name is Jack, and I like to make big snowballs and throw it at people. My name is Jackson, and I like to make snow yellow. Uh, my name is Mason, and I like to build a big snowman too. Cool. Hi, what is your name? My name's Ezra. What grade are you in? Sixth. What is your favorite thing to do when it snows? My favorite thing to do when it snows is probably stay inside and play video games for 12 hours. <laughs> Great. That was interesting. Maybe you can try these winter activities to make January less dull for you. That's all for today, Vikings and Vikings. And remember to make January interesting. Hi, Vikings. I realized that last KLIB video, I didn't tell you guys about Chitulu. Chitulu is a fictional being created by a horror writer called H.P. Lovecraft. Chitulu is a godlike being from another planet who came here before human life arose. Chitulu is an ancient creature, part of a group of beings called the Great Old Ones. Supposedly, Chitulu is the priest or leader of the Old Ones. Chitulu looks like a giant green dragon with a squid head. Chitulu is neither male nor female, and many people worship Chitulu. Chitulu because of its supposed powers over people's minds. The Great Old Ones went dormant in their city called Relay, which slipped under the ocean's crust, or the Earth's crust. Now they're under the Pacific Ocean, waiting to rise again. Also, if someone looks at one of the Great Old Ones, they go insane. Have a great weekend, Vikings. Make sure you don't look at Chitulu. We are looking at how to pronounce the name of this fictional cosmic entity created by writer H.P. Lovecraft and first introduced in the short story called The Call of, well, that word. Essentially, most people say it either Cthulhu 
or Cthulhu. There is a great complete video explaining precisely why none of these pronunciations are the ones that Arthur H.P. Lovecraft himself would have used. And I definitely recommend watching that entire video if you want to learn more about it, but it takes about six minutes to understand in that video. Still, I'll link to it at the end of this video. But the short answer is that this word ought to be pronounced Kalalu. 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 Hey, Lash Rackins. It's the one and your only one, Florin and Hare, to talk about how exactly the Earth is flat. Unlike many of you may believe, it is not a sphere because spheres do not exist. Because cubes exist, like my Rubik's Cube. Uh oh, hey, hi, man. Hi, ah. <laughs> Oh, how the great and might I have fallen. Oh, how, man. Ooh, let this be a lesson. Let's ride in. The, the Earth is flat. I'm right. And there are aliens to exist. Well, wear pinfall hats. The Earth is flat. The government is lying to you. They're, they got cameras everywhere. They may have found me. Uh, gotta go. I have a short segment for this week. I don't know if you or any of your friends have had a pet f fish before, but if so, I think you'll like this segment. In England, this man was fishing at a pond and found a 70 pound goldfish, which is about the same size as a golden retriever. That's pretty cool. When he threw the bait out, it took 25 minutes to reel in because of its size. He also named the fish carrot because of its color. I just wanted to share that quick little thing with you because I thought it was cool. Have a great weekend, Vikings. Hey Vikings, Vikings, hope you all had a wonderful week. I have an interesting story for you. According to CNN, a 42-year-old man intentionally drove off a cliff on the Pacific North Highway with his wife and two children in the car. The drop was over 250 feet. They were driving a Tesla and ended up surviving. I guess that goes to show that Tesla is very expensive but worth the price. Currently, he's being, char is being charged with attempted murder and is facing a trial. Another shocker is this man was actually a doctor. Anyways, hope you all had a wonderful day. Bye. Hey Lester Vikings, I'm Killa Bravo. During winter break, you might have heard of the airline systems going down, causing many flights to be grounded, delayed, or canceled. This was caused by power outage at the Federal Aviation Administration, who is in charge of the airlines in America. Last Wednesday, yet another computer system that sends safety information to pilots shut down, causing more than a thousand flights to be grounded. Well, I have some good news. According to the Associated Press, the airline systems finally started to recover from the power outage at the end of last week. And at this point, air travel should be good to go. That's it. Have a great weekend, Vikings. Hello, Vikings. In sports news, according to ESPN and other various news outlets, the Monday night football game that occurred on January 2nd, the Bills vs. the Bengals came to a screeching halt. Jamal Hamlin, playing safety for the Buffalo Bills, collapsed on the field when his heart stopped. Yes, his heart stopped. We know that violent collisions among football players is part of the game, but this time, after colliding with a receiver from the Bengals' offense, Hamlin suffered cardiac arrest. After the hit, Hamlin got to his feet and then suddenly fell backward and remained motionless. Emergency personnel rushed on the field to administer, to administer CPR and got Hamlin's heart going again. The game did not continue and Hamlin remained in critical conditions for several days following the hit. He has since been able to communicate with doctors and is doing very better, and is doing much better. We hope that new technology can be applied and implemented for the safety and security of players. Have a nice weekend, Vikings. 
Hey, what's your Vikings and Vikings? I'm Sam. Did you know that some of your favorite fast food slash restaurants might be closing down this year? Some of the fast food slash restaurants that might be closing down this year are Jack in the Box, Qdoba, Noodles and Company, Buffalo Wild Wings, Steak and Shake, Steak and Shake, Boston's Market, Joe's Crab Shack, and TGI Fridays. I will miss some of those if they close, but that's all for today. Have a great day and a great week unless you're Vikings. Hey Vikings, soon you'll be old enough to legally get a job. Did you know that the federal minimum hourly wage has been $7.25 an hour since 2009? That's pretty much 14 years. And now we know the price of everything has gone up, and good news is 26 states have increased the minimum of hourly wages. This brings the total uh, to 30 out of 50 states with higher pay wages than $7.25 an hour. Employers in the U.S. cannot pay less than the federal wage of $7.25 an hour. And in the states they have raised the minimum pay, employers cannot pay less than the hourly state's wage. Fortunately for you, the minimum hourly wage in Colorado is currently $13.65 an hour. And if you want to make more, I would definitely consider working at a restaurant. You would definitely earn more than $13.65 an hour. Hopefully, it goes up when you're old enough to work. See you next time, Vikings. Bye. Bye. Hey, Lusher Vikings. I'm Kilo Bravo. Did you know that four Macy's stores are closing down in a couple of months? Well, this is because of a three-year plan to reposition stores in the Macy's store chain. According to Axios.com, 125 stores have already been closed down in the last three years, and four more stores will be closing down in Los Angeles, Hawaii, Maryland, and our own Fort Collins Foothills Mall. A huge clearance sale will take place in these four locations starting this month, going for 8 to 12 weeks. Well, Vikings, hope you found this interesting and have a great weekend. Hello, Lesher Vikings. I'm Logan. And I'm Devin. Welcome to our first video of Weekly News. Today we will be talking about DART. According to CBS News, DART stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. DART is a planetary defense system set to target near-Earth objects or NEOs. And you probably didn't know that DART just collided with an asteroid called Dimorphosis this past week. Dimorphosis is an asteroid that, or that is orbiting a larger asteroid. That Dim is so cool. Dimorphosis orbits a larger asteroid called Didymos. NASA's plan is to see if DART can knock it off its orbit around the bigger asteroid. The rocket was sent in outer space in November 21 and finally reached it on the 26th of September. Be sure to stay tuned because we'll be back for more news about the DART. And be sure to listen for any more news about DART. Have a great, great weekend, weekend, Vikings. Vikings and, and remember, remember to listen for any more news about the DART. DART. Hello Vikings, attention all Star Wars fans. According to NPR News, two bakers in California made a life-size Han Solo pan of bread. They've named it Pan Solo. These bakers are entering the six foot Pan Solo into several contests. They did, however, mention that they do not intend to eat Pan Solo. Have a great weekend, Vikings. Hey Vikings and Vikings, Marvel recently released many dates for upcoming shows and movies, so here they are. Number one is Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania. It will be in theaters February 17th. Number two is a series called Secret Invasions, a mini-series about Nick Fury. It will be released spring of 2023. Number three, coming on May 5th, we have Guardians of the G Galaxy Volume 3. Summer of 2023, Marvel will, re will release a series called Echo. Do you remember Maya, the deaf character in Hawkeye series? She will be starring the show. Number five, the series I am most excited for is Loki Season 2 released also in summer of 2023. Number six, on July 28, 2023, The Marvels will be released starring Monica Rambeau, Carol Danvers, and Kamala Khan. Number seven, we have Ironheart coming out in fall of 2023. Number eight, in winter of 2023, villain Agatha Harkness from WandaVision stars in Agatha Coven of Chaos. Number nine, released in spring of 2024, Daredevil Born Again will be released. Number 10, Captain America New World Order comes out May 3rd of 2024. Number 11, Thunderbolts will be released July 26th, 2024. The bad guys will be teaming up against the Avengers. Number 12, coming in September 6th of 2024, Blade will be released. Number 13, Deadpool 3 will be released November 8th. This movie marks Deadpool's entrance into the MCU universe and will be the first R-rated Marvel movie. Number 14, on Valentine's Day of 2024, 
Fantastic Four will be released in theaters. Number 15, Avengers, The Kang Dynasty will be released on May 2nd of 2025. Last but not least, number 16, Avengers Secret Wars will be released on May 1st of 2026. I'm excited for all of these. Which one are you most excited for? Have a great weekend. Hi Vikings, have you heard of the North Sentinel Island? If not, then let me tell you all about it. North Sentinel Island is an island just east of India and west of Thailand. It is forbidden to visit because there's a 30,000 year old tribe on the island that attacks and shoots arrows at any tourist passing through. The last person who visited the island was a photographer named John Allen Chow who paid fishermen to ferry him to the island. This 30,000 year old tribe is known to be aggressively repelled to outsiders. When he arrived, things were normal and he started taking photos of the island beaches. Then he started to see tribe members come out of the trees onto the beach with bow and arrows and they started to shoot at them. Long story short, the, for the photographer did not make it, and this was the last photo I ever took. Well, that sums up what I had to say. Bye, Vikings. Hey, Lester Vikings. I'm Kilo Bravo. And I'm North. Today is National Cheese, Lo cheese Lovers Day. Here's a fun fact. There are around 2,000 varieties of cheese. That's pretty interesting. Well, today, Caleb and I will be challenging two contestants in a high-stakes cheese trivia. The contestants are Arwen and Ella. Let's get this trivia started. Question one. How many pounds of milk makes one pound of cheese? A, 14, B, 4, C, 1, or D, just one? C. D. Arwen was correct. It takes 10 pounds of milk to make one pound of cheese. Which cheese is most popular in the US? Cheddar, American, Gouda or mozzarella? American. Cheddar. You both are incorrect. Oh, dang. <laughs> the correct answer was mozzarella. D, mozzarella. Uh, that makes sense. How much hard sense. cheese is unhealthy for you? A, over 50 grams, B, over 35 grams, C, over 75 grams, or D, over 90 grams? C. Uh, B. You both are incorrect again. <laughs> over 50 grams of hard cheese is unhealthy for you. What is the most popular cheese recipe in the U.S.? A. Three cheese pizza. B. Macaroni and cheese. C. Cheese curds. Or D. Cheeseburgers. Cheese curds. Cheeseburgers. You are both incorrect. Ah, the answer was B. Macaroni and cheese. I knew it. I was going to say gonna that. Probably going to be like Velveeta. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's probably one of the hardest questions yet. Question five. When was the first record of cheese manufacturing? A, 15, 1500 BCE, B, 1432, C, 2000 BCE, or D, AD 1? 2000 BCE. The one with the, with the four <laughs> and the, yeah. Okay. The what? The, the one, one with the, the four. four. <laughs> um, you mean 1432? Yeah. Our one was correct. <laughs> the correct, um, <laughs> the first record of cheese manufacturing was in 2000 BCE. Oh, uh, Arwen, right? Yeah. <laughs> Arwen wins! Eat your face. I will sue. <laughs> Good afternoon, Vikings and Vikings. Do you have a dream dog? If you have one in mind, and if you have $1,000 lying around, maybe you could clone it. Miracle Millie, the tiny chihuahua around, was cloned a world record 49 times. Scientists were aiming to find out the genetic reasons behind her tiny stature. At birth, she weighed less than an ounce. She could fit in the head of a teaspoon, believe it or not. Sadly, Miracle Millie passed away recently, but I'm sure other dogs will be cloned for their unique qualities. Scientists report that the cloning was completely safe, so don't worry. See you soon. Hey, Lester Vikings and Viking. Queens, I'm Devin, and today I'm going to be talking about bees. You might know bees and their help for pollination, but today I'm going to be talking about how they like to play. According to Go Dogo News, recent studies say that bees like to play with toys just like us humans. How this was discovered was they put the bees in a small container and place toys, bee-sized balls 
and after two minutes, the bees started to play with them. Well, that's all for today. Have a great day and a wonderful weekend. Hi, Lesser Vikings. I have a funny story for this week. For this week, let's go to the University of Sydney, where they found some unusual behavior coming from some octopi. These octopi do this weird thing where they throw shells, silt, and algae at each other. They purposely target other octopi sometimes, or they're just cleaning their cave. But that's not always the case, according to the university. Another weird thing the university th found is that female octopi were more likely to throw objects than males, and dark darker octopuses were more likely to throw things than their paler counterparts. Have a great week in Vikings, and if you want to read about this, go to Doggo News. Hey Lusher Vikings and Vikings. I'm Roxy. And I'm Emma. We are, we are going to be exploring fun places to travel to and what to do there. This episode we'll be talking about Moab, Utah. First, let's say some things that you can do there, starting with Arches National Park. Arches National Park is a really cool place to visit because there are arches, hiking, canyons, and so much more. There's also Dead Horse State Park. Dead Horse is known for its incredible sunsets, fun hikes, mountain biking, beautiful overlooks, and so many more incredible things. There's also Yellow Cat uh, Bloom Land. Yellow Cat is one of the biggest places you can explore in Utah. There's a lot of places to hike. A lot of off-roading. And no one is there. And it is so beautiful. Moab has so much more to explore. Well, Vikings, there are so many cool places to explore. See you next time. Hi, Lesser Vikings. I'm Logan. And welcome to this week's Weird Place. This week's Weird Place is known by a lot of people, maybe including you. This week's Weird Place is Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. Here are some fun facts about the place. Yellowstone is 3,500 square miles, which makes it bigger than Delaware and Rhode Island combined. Yellowstone is also home to more than 500 active geysers, which is over half the amount of geysers in the world. Yellowstone is the first national park in the U.S., founded by President Theodore Roosevelt. Yellowstone is one of the largest volcanoes on Earth, or more commonly known as a supervolcano. Now here's the scary part. Yellowstone is supposedly overdue for an eruption, and if this were to happen, just about all the lower 48 states would be uninhabitable for several decades. Also, if this were to happen, Colorado, Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana would com be completely covered in three feet of ash. Yellowstone is a crazy and fascinating place, yet it is unpredictable because you never know when another eruption will happen. Yellowstone is a cool place to visit. You should go. Have a great weekend. Happy Friday, everybody. This is Coach Swan, and I am uh, putting this little video together to get people pumped up for track season coming up soon. This is one of the greatest sports out there. Run, jump, throw, hang out with uh, your friends and teammates and go out and compete against the other schools here in Fort Collins. Uh, last year, our boys team won districts, and uh, we would love to go out and continue this trend of uh, lesser athletics being in the spotlight. Uh, at the end of this video, there will be a link, a tiny URL. I would want everybody to write it down to um, go to that survey if you are, in fact, planning on joining the track team this year, okay? It is open for sixth graders, so please write this uh, website down. Go there, fill out the survey, and then I will be sending out some information to everybody once I get all the emails collected. I know it's only January and people are already busy with basketball and wrestling and all the other awesome sports we offer, but I'm going to get a head start on this and kind of get a feel where we're going. Hope everybody's doing well. Have a great weekend. Hi Vikings and Vic Queens. We hope you're enjoying our first show of 2023. This semester, I am so excited for track season to start. Let's go ask some people what they hope to do this semester or what they already love about it. Hi, what is your name? My name is Emery. What grade are you in? I'm in sixth grade. What was your favorite part of this semester? My favorite part of this semester was uh, getting to know the new people in my classes. Great. 
Hi, what is your name? My name is Alex. Um, nice to meet you all. Uh, what grade are you in? I'm in eighth. Uh, what, uh, what is your favorite part of this semester? I gotta honestly say, it's my friends. And if any of you are watching, bro, I appreciate you, bro. I know where you live also, you know, just, just saying, just putting that out there, yeah. Hi, what is your name? Esther. What grade are you in? Six. What is your favorite part of this semester? Probably my favorite part of this semester is learning how to is learning all the skills that you need to know in PE. Great. Hi, what is your name? What grade are you in? Six. What is your favorite part of this semester? I am really excited about PE because I think it'll be fun and a good opportunity. Great. That was interesting. I hope all these hopes for the new semester are just as exciting as you imagined. Let's all continue to make good memories and finish this school year strong. That's all for today, Vikings and Vikings, and have a great semester. Good afternoon, Lesser Vikings and Vikings. I'm Macy Earhart, and welcome back to your daily dose of information. Valentine's Day is coming up soon, which also means Stuco is handing out Valentine's. They will be handing them out on February 13th and 14th. They're a dollar for a non-candy one and a candy one for two dollars. The same week is Kindness Week. February 24th is the day of our semi-formal. Dress nice and bring your best attitude. You are not allowed to come if you have received any in or out of school suspensions or lunch attention. That's all for today, Vikings. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, and be, get ready to have fun. Hello, my name is Jane and I'm from Yearbook. I'm Livia, buy a yearbook. I'm Riley, the lecture your yearbook is so awesome, you should buy it. Let us tell you why. Every year, our yearbook has won a National Excellence Award and we are hoping that this year will be no different. We have tried our hardest to make sure that every student is in the yearbook at least three times. As we speak, more pictures are being added to the yearbook. Don't miss out on getting your yearbook. So get it today. Once you buy it, the yearbook will be delivered towards the end of the year school year. Our yearbook is so slay. I'm Lesher, wait, <laughs> hi Lesher Vikings and Vikings. Queens. I'm Haley Schneider. And I'm Arnaz Bakari. Quick joke for you. Not. Not <laughs> 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 <laughs>